Hello friends, it is a afternoon rotation here at the Goodwill Bins in downtown St. Louis. I am here on a afternoon rotation because I went and dropped off my packages late today and I was like, well, I'm already out. I might as well do it, you know, just in succession, uh, keep the workflow going well. And honestly, like it's kind of worked out both ways. Like either I do my packages like late at night, right before I go to bed. And then I have my packages ready to go in the morning for the morning rotation, or I do it like I did today where I do my packages sort of after lunch and then come to the bins after I drop off my packages because it's literally on the way. But enough rambling, let's get inside, let's grab a bag, let's grab our gloves, let's let's get to it. This is the most empty I've ever seen it. This is crazy. What the heck? Where are all the bins? Where are all the bins go? This is the media right now. This is probably just left over from earlier. We're bringing out some stuff right now. Man, it's probably nothing. One of the employees just said five minutes they're gonna bring some more books out, so hopefully, there's some good stuff. It's probably gonna be a frenzy because there's gonna be a bunch of people waiting, I'm sure. Actually, I might take this Halo book right here. Halo Evolutions. Yeah, this might go for something. They had a $10 bill on it at one point. All right, so we got a Dixie Chick CD, Rainbow Six Las Vegas here. Uh, we're just waiting for them to bring out more bins. Like, there's literally all this open space and it should all be full. So we're still waiting. I'm in such a limbo mode right now. I'm like debating whether or not I should go over to the GM really quick and kind of keep my eye over here. Maybe maybe I'll just go to a couple over here. Just go to a couple and I just kind of keep glancing back and see if they put out some more bins or roll some more out. So they finally put out all the bins in the media. However, the one guy that came out, he was like, you guys looking for video games? We were all just like ears perked up like, yes, we are. And he said that they're, the games are like all the way in, in the back basically and that tomorrow morning they're gonna have the bins out but of course those bins out but of course we're having a garage sale tomorrow morning so i won't be able to be here yeah so <laughs> dang i mean what we have so far is okay uh i got lucky and a guy found a stack of ps4 games and he gifted me this one so thank you so much but just some very bare bones media today but we're gonna keep going in the gm and see if we can scrounge up some more money on this day all right i guess this will make it worth our time this will make it worth our time, even though it doesn't have the front cover, but that doesn't scare me. As long as the battery tray is okay, which it looks good. Heck yeah, all right. Sweet. All right, we'll take it. We'll take it. That'll definitely help the day right here. I know what y'all are thinking. That looks like a poop stain. Doesn't smell like a poop stain though. Uh, I think we're gonna take a, a shot on this Squishmallow, throw it in the wash throw a bunch of oxyclean on it and uh pray for the best i think it'll be good I, especially because we're, we're kind of reaching today so i think uh I'm salvage a couple bucks out of it for sure these are kind of cool these are kind of cool huh just old cool i don't know kind of neat that one's from ant to Robert? I don't know. Anyway, those are kind of neat. But we dig. We keep on digging. I always go back and forth on like on phones, but this one looks like a nicer one. If it's in here, I can take a shot on it. I guess something's in here. It definitely doesn't look like a phone. It looks like a modem of some sort. Uh, SMC. I don't really see this brand too often, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and grab this. I mean, it definitely looks to be, what is this? Does it say, this is definitely some sort of router of some sort. So we're gonna go ahead and grab it and see if this is anything. Cause I, I rarely see this brand, like I said. Somebody noticed that I had a Squishmallow in my bag and they're like, oh, the Squish is actually good today. I saw one over there and it's really, really rough. And yeah, they were not lying. This thing is, even I wouldn't take a shot at this one. This one's just yellowed. It's got a ton of stains. But I mean, I could see this selling for 15, 20 bucks. Otherwise, it's cleaned up. But yeah, for us, a piece of that. Picked up a random figure. That's pretty much it. We can keep going. Okay, I just glanced over from the last clip and saw these Bose speakers. Ah, uh, these could be something. But yeah, we needed the uh, we need the 12 volt AC adapter. So there's the other pair of the Bose speakers. But if we can find the power cord. We can find the power cord we'd be in business with these bose speakers i think i think 100 we'd be a bit nicer yeah it's not 
that. Dang, man. That sucks. That sucks. It'd definitely probably be worth something, but yeah. Looks like we're leaving them. Oh, I didn't even notice. They were actually computer speakers. So maybe I'm off base because their computer speakers are probably not worth as much, but who knows. This looks like a very specialized hammer. I'm not 100% sure what it's for, like that little gap right there. Uh, genuine Hickory Wood, Mint Craft, kind of a fancy name. So I'm gonna go for this, guys. Let's, let's definitely look this up. This isn't the best name in electronics, but this Memorex little portable CD player comes with like a, I don't know, maybe like a little mobile, like, oh, if you're like on the, if you're like running or something, doing active, you can change the track or whatever from this little device that attaches to it. That's kind of cool. What is that? Or is it the Taylor's Passion? Scratch for scent. What? What? Oh, okay. I get it. I get it. Somebody put this bear inside. Okay, I see, I see what's happening there. Wow. In order to get out of here at or under an hour, we need to start doing homework right now. It is 3.44. We really didn't pick up too much of anything else. We did pick up, I think this is, I'm not 100% sure. I think this is formula, uh, but I'm not, again, not 100% sure. It says the wonder box, so I'm not 100%. Uh, we picked up one Tupperware uh, lid for Zesty. She'll be happy about that. And yeah, we need to just go through and start sorting. All right, y'all, we are pretty much all the way through sorting out everything. Uh, we did throw back that router. We, we did, oh yeah, we did find this little camera uh, off film. This little Kodak disc camera was worth nothing really. I mean, it had very low sell through. Same thing with the Memorex uh, CD player, very low sell through rate, very low sales price on average. So we're throwing those back. However, we still need to figure out what the heck this hammer is. So we're gonna do that together. So here we have Google Lens. This is a free app via Google, and we're gonna actually lay this on a more solid surface. Let's lay it like this. Therefore, it can capture the image a little better. Let's see if we can just come up with what it says here. Um, it looks like it might be this, an upholstery hammer. Yeah, that, kind of, that looks pretty similar. Yeah, vintage upholstery hammer. I don't think this one is vintage, of course, but let's go ahead and look up upholstery hammer. This is also a tack, oh, okay. It could be a tack hammer. Let's look up tack hammer first. That actually looks a lot closer. So tack hammer. Let's just see what we see in general. Uh, okay, kind of close. Kind of close, yeah, that one looks kind of close. Okay, let's actually search the brand along with it. Let's do Mint Craft. It's very hard to type with one hand, but Mint, not, there we go. Craft, Mint Craft. Okay, nothing came up for that. So the Google search proved nothing. I went ahead and searched Mint Craft. It also had seven ounces on the other side here and right there and no results for mint craft seven ounce hammer as well so i'm just gonna go ahead and say that this is probably sort of an off brand or whatever but i mean i don't have this in my arsenal of tools at home so this is gonna be a personal buy and we know how much it's weigh it weighs so we know we're gonna pay you know around uh around a dollar to a dollar 25 for this thing i guess i'm getting blessed by the throwback gods today uh a yashika fx2 i mean really good sell through rate looks like an average sell price between 45 and 60 probably um okay yeah <laughs> i mean the lens works great everything looks pretty good on it it reminds me a lot of uh, a different camera that i've sold before the k1000 uh that's what it reminds me a lot of but also this vintage ranger boats jacket that i found uh we're going to talk more about this later but i just want to say thank you to whoever threw these back so I can't lie guys, if we didn't get those two things at the very end, this would have been a very sad haul. But uh, I'm glad, I'm glad somebody decided to throw that back. Uh, let's get home though. Let's go talk about this haul and this weird day. All right guys, back here in the thrift dungeon. And honestly guys, I thought this video was just gonna kind of be like a little lull, you know, a little like 
downtrodden sort of like, oh man, we can't always win at the bins sort of episode. And honestly, looking at this haul, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Uh, we did pick up a little bit of media today, not too much. Uh, looks like two Blu-rays, nothing to write home about. We'll probably, again, like you guys know, we love to trade these in for $2 a piece uh, and get store credit at our local record shop and then just buy other stuff and flip that or however may, you know, however it goes. They do also have video games at that record store, which is really cool. So we can take these, buy video games, flip the video games, whatever we need to do. But yeah, so uh, either way, you know, we're paying around 30, 40 cents uh, per Blu-ray and uh, it's just a good profit margin. One PS4 game, uh, or actually, sorry, we had, well, we had two PlayStation games, one PS4, one PS3. We actually found this one, this uh, Rainbow Six Las Vegas, I think is maybe only a five or $6 game, I'm pretty sure. Uh, this Crash Bandicoot though, this is the Insane Trilogy. And again, I was talking about that in the episode where uh, a fellow bins goer, I, I talked to this person a couple times. Um, so we had like a little bit of a rapport going on and they rolled out a new cart and he just so happened to be on the end of the, of the new cart where a stack of PS4 games were. And I was like, oh man, you got so lucky because like I said also in the episode that they basically had all the games in the back of the warehouse so they weren't going to roll out any games because they literally asked us like the guys that were standing around in the media myself included like hey you guys looking for video games they're like yes we are please bring them out and they're like yeah no we're going to bring them out tomorrow and so yeah um I, I basically was super bummed because we had a garage sale which by the way the garage sale went really really crappy it sucked I think the weather was just too cold but anyway I digress uh, we got gifted this Crash Bandicoot game by that person. So thank you so much uh, for this. I think this is maybe like a $13 game or so. So heck yeah, right there should be some solid money right there. Uh, this DC Titans DVD, I think this one has okay value on eBay. Um, if not, we'll throw this in the booth for maybe four or five bucks got two cds and even these are a little bit questionable uh dixie chicks and then will smith again like i'm not super over the moon about these um i feel like if we do well not if we're going to put them in the booth uh we're going to put these in the booth probably on the lower end at like maybe two dollars and fifty cents a piece maybe three bucks you know just kind of on the lower end of what we price uh dvds at and so yeah, that's pretty much it for the media. Two electronics, we got the TI-83 Plus without the uh, cover, which kind of hurts it a little bit, not a ton, but it definitely does t uh, detract from the value. People want the nice cover and everything. Uh, let's go ahead and test this really quick. And now that I'm looking at it a little closer too, it does look like pretty decent amount of scratches uh, on the rear here, but either way, it does have a clean battery compartment, which is always good, so. Yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, fire this up and see if we have a working calculator. We did have a working TI-84 Plus the other day, which was nice. Oh, oh, yep, there we go. All right, the screen is a little dull there, but you guys can see a little bit. It also does have that little black spot right there, but everything seems to be working. All the buttons are working, so I, you know, this will be on the lower end of what these uh, what these calculators sell for, which is usually about thirty to forty bucks. Uh, so I have to imagine that this one will probably sell, you know, somewhere between twenty and twenty five dollars. But still, you know, it'll probably sell fast, which is key, and uh, yeah, we'll still make a pretty good amount of profit. Found one Sony remote. Uh, again, I don't think this, I'm pretty sure I've sold this one before, the RMT D119. I've sold this before. You know, it's like, a, it's a standard, pretty much $10 remote. Uh, you know, I, I still pick up remotes uh, in this day and age. I know that like, this is like one of the first things that a lot of resellers are like, hey, pick up remotes. You'll get start. you'll get your feet wet on these. You'll get started on these. I still pick them up. They eventually will sell, not for a lot of money, but they're just plentiful and, uh, you know, as long as they have clean battery trays, which this one does, this one actually had one battery in there, I go ahead and take them. Last couple things uh, that we got before we got the last two items was the Squishmallow. And actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and get this in the wash. I'm gonna show you guys how I wash my plushes. So I've got these things called garment bags. These are for more like delicate clothes, uh, but I use them for plush. So I'll use for like, a smaller medium style one. I've got that and I'll just throw that in there with a little bit of OxyClean. 
So just a smidge of, of, of powder OxyClean right inside the bag. And then I'll zip that up. Bam, one done. And then of course, for bigger ones, I've got a bigger bag. We'll throw this one in there again. A little bit of powder oxy in there, like so. Zip this one up, and then we throw them in the wash and make sure that they're on the, well, for mine, it's called hand wash, but make sure you wash it on a delicate cycle. I also use very basic uh, Costco brand, you know, it could be Walmart brand, just very, very basic detergent as well. Nothing fancy. And uh, yeah, I just do hand wash or delicate and then allow them to air dry and that's it. And we have the formula. I made sure that it was still sealed inside the package there. It looks like the uh, the fever, you know, the uh, the crazy price, price gouging that was going on with, uh, with formula has gone down. So I feel better morally and ethically selling some formula on eBay. So we'll probably get like 30 bucks or something out of that. I think that's what it was uh, for the Wonder Box. Yeah, there it is. The Wonder Box was going for about 30 bucks. And the last thing before we f we found somebody's throwbacks was the Tupperware lid. Dun, da, da, da. Yes, very crazy, I know, but this is super clean. We have a big old collection of Tupperware lids that we like to keep around so we can match up uh, with other Tupperware that we do get in from whatever way. But yeah, to reiterate guys, I mean, always check people's throwbacks. I cannot stress this enough. The first thing I found was this Ranger Boats, uh, flipping Arkansas. I think this is where Ranger Boats originate from. I know they're somewhere in the Midwest, if I remember correctly, I'm not hundred percent sure, but Ranger Boats is a really popular brand of fishing boats. Uh, so yeah, this is the only reason that I've even picked this up, but it says, yeah, Redman all American press on the side here. I did find one exact comp on eBay. I believe it was going for 40 bucks. So yeah, I mean, just a really cool piece. It looked like it had a older style uh, uh, tag on it. It was made in Singapore, so not made in USA, but still, you could definitely tell it had a little bit of age. It does have some very light uh, staining on it, but that doesn't scare me. I mean, if we have to oxy bath this, I think it'll be fine. There's like a little bit right there, but even if we were to sell this as is, I think we could get 30 bucks out of this thing. And then right here, what reminded me so much of the K1000 is this Yashica FX2. And it really is very, very similar of a camera, just super heavy duty, very basic, down to the point, you know, film camera like this is this is it you know um just you could just tell that it, just by the weight of it is a really good build quality like the k1000 is as well um just a really solid you know all-around camera of course it's always a bonus that it came with a lens and the lens itself doesn't look like it's anything super special or anything like that but the fact that it came with a lens is always good the lens itself also looks like it's it's just quality made i think this is the kit lens the lens that came with the camera but don't quote me on that, I don't know 100%. But you know, it does cycle through and everything, smooth as heck, I mean, everything is working on this guy. I don't know if I can get the rewind, there it goes. Yeah, rewind's working, like, I mean, everything is just working so solidly on this thing. So again, uh, not. I don't think this commands nearly as much money as the K1000 does, but I still think we can get 40 bucks out of it. And the moral of the story here is, you know, we were looking at like, what? you know, maybe a 40 to $50 day, uh, before these two items. And with this on top, I mean, we're looking at adding another, you know, probably $60 net, uh, between these two items. Granted this Rangers, uh, the Ranger boat jacket will probably sell a little bit slower, but this will sell a little faster, but still, I mean, an extra $60 net profit, uh, just for looking at somebody's throwbacks while we were waiting in line. I mean, guys, I can't stress it enough. Check people's throwbacks. They throw back good stuff all the dang time. All right, y'all, I'm going to end the episode here. We have some listing to take care of before the podcast tonight. Also, if you guys are watching this, when this video releases, hang around till 7 p.m. CST and come hang out at the podcast that me and Marcus Dixon's Pickens do every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Sometimes it's on my channel, sometimes it's on his channel, but this week it is on my channel. So if you're watching this, 
just stick around, look for the link on my channel, and you guys will be able to hang out with us for an hour. We just hang out, rap about life, we rap about reselling, we rap about everything, so come hang out. But otherwise, guys, make sure you hit that sub button down below. We'd really appreciate it. Hit that like button if you like the video. Tell us the best part of this haul down in the comments. But until then, guys, we will see you later on the next grab. Bye for now.